So the hotshots are doing something that Mrs. Hotshot said we would never do again. I think I've said that a couple times. Building another airplane. Yeah. That makes three. So that will be the third airplane being built. So let's talk about that. Yeah, um, I was finishing up my instrument rating and I was out flying with my instructor and we were, we'd finished for the day and we were chatting and he mentioned that, um, he's like, you know, if, if Isaac wants to learn to fly, he's not going to be able to fly this plane and, you know, I hadn't ever thought about it before, but I was like, oh. That's a good point. I'm like, why did we get rid of our 182? <laughs> um, and so let's answer that. We got rid of our 182 for a couple of reasons. One is we had two airplanes already. <laughs> well, we had an airplane. We had 1.75 right. airplanes. We were building the 10. Um, space, right? There's only a limited amount of space in this hangar. And so fitting a 182 in here would have been a bit of a challenge. Perhaps doable, potentially doable, but uh, very tight. And then third, right, it was 1970. The ongoing maintenance required for a certified 182, right, is getting more and more. There's more ADs coming out. There was a spark corrosion issue that had just come out um, at the time we were selling it. And so uh, continuing to dump a lot of money into it seemed like a bad investment at the time. It, it did. It really did. And um, the 182, I mean, the whole reason we built Caleb started the 10 um, because he wasn't really sure that he wanted to build another airplane after he was finished with the eight was because we wanted, at this point in time, I think, I think I, we'd gotten serious about talking about me getting my pilot's license. And so the whole reason I got my pilot's license was because we wanted a second person to, to help out, be able to fly the plane if something happened to Caleb when we were in the air. Um, you know, and so it was like, okay, we want to go more places the 182 is slow. Um, you know, it, this is not as capable, right? Right. Old it, avionics. Right, and it didn't have. We had upgraded some of the avionics, but you know, it, it had you know the six pack. It didn't have you know the glass cockpit. But the biggest thing with it is the autopilot was this didn't work very well. Pretty horrible. Yep. Um, you know, and it, it just makes flying for multiple hours on fun. Yeah, and so we considered uh, upgrading the avionics in the 182. You know, you can put in dual G5s, you can put in uh, Garmin Autopilot, um, remove the vacuum system, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, at this point probably twenty to $30,000, which felt like wasted money throwing at that plane that you would not get back when you sold it necessarily. Um, right, and even all that didn't make up for the fact that it, it's a relatively slow plane. Right. And also at the time it was 51 years old. <laughs> right. Like it 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 is it was getting older and uh uh maintenance issues surrounding older planes are just only going to get worse and worse, right? And so right. So uh, I mean it, it really did make logical sense. We were almost finished with the 10. You know, it it, it just it seemed like the right time and we kind of had a buyer fall in our lap mm -hmm. and it was like okay this is perfect it's easy it's let's do it um you know and 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 then um you know Isaac wasn't so gung-ho about aviation like he's he's definitely like full steam ahead this is what I want to do um so you know Caleb made some sort of comment like, oh, maybe we should build a 12 because that's the perfect training plane. And I was like, oh, this sounds horrible. Like, because my, my big thing with building, if you're building, you're not flying. Um, I've built, I've been around for two planes and let me tell you, that's, that's the way it works here. You know, when, when you, you work full time and have all the other stuff, you're either flying or you're building. And so I was, I was pretty hesitant 
But we kind of floated it to Isaac, and he talked about it for a little bit, and then kind of didn't talk about it for a while. And then, like, just within the past couple months, he's like, okay, what if I really do want to build a plane? Like, I mean, he definitely, his interest definitely peaked. Um, well, let's, let's even take a step back from that. What we talked about was, I mean, the kid's 13 right now. Right. He's not starting his flying career at this moment, right? Like, he's still a few years off before he, I, I in mean, earnest. He definitely, he definitely could, but, like, there's... Well, he can't even reach the pedals in the no, RV he, tent. No, he can So, so he can. my point is, he is, he's still got a few years before, in earnest, he is going to start flying right. and gaining hours, you know, doing any type of lesson, and still has time to figure out if, if that's even really what he wants to do or not. Um, but since we have it available, we want to we want to make it as an option available to him since we have everything, you know, right. to, to make that easy. So, you know, one of the things we talked about was, well, just as that gets closer, right? Like we could always buy some type of training plane. Right. Like a 150. A 150, or you know, something light that he can train in, and then we'll just get rid of when the training's done, sell it, uh, or keep, you know, whatever we want to do. But like, you know, that, that's always an option. Um, but one of the things that was conflating about it was he's a tinkerer. He likes to mess with stuff. He likes cars, which we don't know anything about. <laughs> he likes, he, he's a gearhead and a motorhead, self-taught, right? Learned it from osmosis from some source that we're not aware of. Uh, but, you know, like he's very much into like models of cars, what engines are in them, how they work, and wants to like tinker with that stuff. And so for a little while, we were trying to pursue that avenue of some car tinkering uh, you know, to get him expo experience and exposure to that for the future. But it's just not, it just wasn't really working out very well because neither one of us are people that know anything about that stuff. Like I was never a car tinker. Right. I'm not a gearhead. Um, I'm not a motorhead. Yeah. And so um, trying to teach him that stuff is impossible when you don't know it yourself, right? You're like, you need somebody who knows that stuff and can do it. And he can get some exposure to that as he gets a little bigger. But like, like we don't have a mechanic shop we don't have bays, we're not constantly working on cars, right. so we don't really have a chance to expose it to him other than like showing him how to change the oil in the car, you know, or you know, how to do some basic maintenance stuff. We're not tearing engines apart, car engines apart, right? right? And so he was not gonna get that exposure from us necessarily. Um, but it became evident to me that his desire and ability to play and tinker with this stuff could be put to use with building an airplane because one, we know how to do that. Two, we've got well, yeah, we've got experience doing it before. We have all the tools and all the necessary stuff, right, and a place to do it. We, we have a couple years before, like, we're ready to right. kind of really get serious about him. Yeah, and the plane doesn't have flying. to be flying right now, right. right? And so we've got that opportunity available. And so we floated the idea, and he was lukewarm about it. He's like, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Like, it could be interesting, maybe not. Also, he, he recognized that it was a pretty big endeavor, um, so one of the things that we did in in the interim is Vance has a light box that it kind of introduces you to like all the different types of rivets and stuff like that. He came out here and built the thing pretty much on his own pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, took ownership of it and blasted it out, but really kind of enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and then he he had a final product, and he had a lot of pride in that. I mean, yeah, he he's been moving it around. He's trying to figure out where the best place yeah, to put it is. Yeah, he wants people to see it because he built that thing, and you know, it's his pride and joy. He he constructed it, so it's cool. He he likes it. Another another thing that um, I did this winter is when we did the annual inspection. I got a lot more involved this year. Um, I helped out quite a bit in 2021, or I shouldn't say quite a bit. I helped out some in 2021, was quite a bit more involved in 2022. And it's, it's very interesting to me. Like, I, I feel like I have a better understanding of the airplane, but also, I don't want to call it fun, but it, it, is, it is kind of fun to like work with your hands and do something different, yeah. like have a project, you know, and I was not really involved with the building I was not at all involved with the eight because the kids were just too little. Um, and then we were around and we saw stuff. And, you know, like if Caleb made a, an extra set of hands, we did stuff. Um, oh, the 10, I think we were a little bit more involved in. I think everybody riveted at least a couple rivets on the 10. Um, 
but there was kind of this feeling of like, oh, maybe I should have been more involved in this process. And so it's also kind of a chance for me to build with Isaac yeah. for something for us to do together, but also um, to kind of get a better understanding. And, right. and so my, my philosophy on it was the RV-8 was built first. It was, it's one of the harder to construct planes that Vans makes just due to its age and the way the plans are done. Built it in, a, in two, two and a half years, roughly. Yeah, r really. I pretty, mean, pretty good speed yeah. for that plane. And then th when we built the 10, because I all, had all the knowledge of the 8, really blasted through the 10 pretty quick and built it in about the same amount of time, which should be a much longer build. He, he did have some help. Yeah, had, had help, um, but knew what I was doing at that point, and so like uh, had to take all the lessons learned and built the 10. Part of the factor of building the 10 was getting this thing done, right? Like, right. Like, I, wanted, I enjoyed the build process, but the ultimate goal was to get an aircraft so we could go places and replace the Cessna. Because there's just places we weren't going in the Cessna because it was just too much extra time to get there. Too, too far or, you know, just we didn't want to go because the Cessna was really a bear to fly in yeah. IFR. Yeah, we didn't want to get stuck and then not have to hand hard IFR fly somewhere back, right? So like we were just a little limited in where we would go with it. Great for going and visiting the family for the day on the other side of the state or something, but mm -hmm. um, not a long haul plane. So like the, the mission was getting the 10 done. And yes. so like it was lots of weekends blasting away at the work, yeah. not flying, like you said, mm -hmm. in order to finish it. And it's finished and now we enjoy it. And like life is normal, normal, right? Yeah. But the kids, particularly as the crowd, are at an age where like they want to do some stuff. They want to have some ownership. They want to have some hands on stake. And so the notion of building a 12 is actually somewhat appealing for a couple of reasons. One is I think it's going to go extremely fast. The, the 10 was supposed to take 2,300 hours. The uh, 12 is supposed to take about seven to 800 hours. So it's like a third the time to build it. And I think it's going to go even faster than that with somebody who's already done it before and has the knowledge right. of putting stuff together, right? You know, and like we were out here working on it yesterday and we pretty much finished the rudder. We finished the rudder in a one session. In the, and it was maybe three hours, but right. there, I mean, there are three of us working, so you have three sets of hands. I mean, obviously like Isaac and I are not as fast in, in, as, as Caleb is, but like we're definitely, like I felt like we'd, yeah, blasted Definitely through Definitely learning a lot. But my, like my ability on this plane is less build it and more just the back end support of helping understand the plans, getting parts ready to go, you know, right. kind of streamlining the process so that you guys can do the build. Tricky riveting or something like that, I can just get in and do. I can show you what I'm doing, but also just get in and do it. So um, you can move forward. But the fact that we're not doing a lot of match drilling, the fact that, the, you know, the, the, a lot, no dimpling involved and the complex riveting, like it just goes so much faster with this plane. And then in the end, when this plane is built, like one, we've got a trainer for our teenager when he's ready. We also have another plane that you can fly. Yes. That is simpler, slower, you know, has a more docile characteristics, right? right? For fair weather flying where you don't maybe have to deal with some of the intricacies of faster, right. uh, you know, rugged. And so like it, it gives some additional options. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, Zoe hasn't necessarily expressed a huge interest in flying, although she's been told that, you know, she doesn't get a choice. Like, she has to take some flying lessons when, you know, you know, you know when she's 17, 18, or even, you know, when she's a little slightly older than that in college, um, just because I think it's a super unique opportunity. Um, but, you know, she... Um, I think given the right job around the build, I think, you know, she'll definitely help and get involved. So it's really kind of a f fun way to, you know, spend some time as a family and, and kind of see a different piece side of the aviation. Yeah. My contention all along with building the planes is you're turning money into metal, but you still have a thing that's worth a thing. Right. And so the notion of buying these kits and building the 12, it's not a money losing proposition, right? It's an investment of time, but it's a thing you'll generally get your investment back out of right. if you when you decide you're done with it. And so it was purely a notion of, hey, let's get the kit, let's get started and see, does he dig it? Are we enjoying doing it? Are we making progress? And do we feel like 
we want to continue doing it after we get started and, and you know, right. kind of get it going? Or are we done and we just want to get rid of it? There's always going to be a buyer out there for those kits. And so getting started is not hard, um, provided you can place the order and wait for the kit to show up, you know, right. and all that stuff. So we did. We, we got a tail kit. I already ordered the other kits, uh, you know, because there's a time delay involved in getting them here. Um, we really just want to get the thing in and get the kids exposed to it and start doing some basic building with the 12 on the tail and see how they do. How would you say we've done so far? I think it's going great. I mean, I think, I, I mean, especially yesterday, Isaac was totally digging. He was like blasting through rivets yesterday. I, I left to go pick up Zoe and I came back and I was like, uh, what happened here? Like, it was amazing how much he got done. I, th I think I was gone a little bit longer than I expected, but like maybe 30 minutes and he, he had blasted through a ton of work. So he's, he's digging it, he's learning something, he's hands on. Um, so I think that's really awesome for him as a kid, like to have that sort of experience. Yeah, and I think the end story is if this plane gets built and he learns to fly in it, how cool is it to say, not only did I learn to fly, or did I solo when I'm 16, got my license when I'm 17 or whatever, his schedule is, but also I did it in the plane that I constructed, right? Because yeah. the goal is to like let him do as much as possible, mm -hmm. be his back end support, fill in the gaps. But I'm not trying to build this plane. Like I've already right. got a couple. <laughs> it's right. fun, but you know, at the end, like it's a learning experience for him and for you, and, yes. and hopefully Zoe at some point. Um, and so, you know, letting them have the exposure to that stuff and getting a feel and better understanding of of the mechanics of these home build aircraft, like, are just going to make you better at understanding maintenance of the other planes too. Parting thoughts? No, I don't have any parting. Okay. Booyah. Keep watching, like, and subscribe.